let's get back to it. All right, so we're done with TMI Entertainment, um, and we're gonna go see about this illegal back alley brain surgery. Okay, all right. This looks like the spot. Hey, it's those wrestlers from before. I'm awfully nervous and still a bit shaken up. Let's hurry and get out of here. It's Night Witch and Cactus Canary. You should come to our New Year's show. There's nothing better than seeing our bombs away move in person. Here's an autograph. Thanks for being a fan of the Violent Wings. If you don't know what my name means, you should look it up. The powerhouse in a local wrestling stable called The Violent Wings. Did I get an autograph? Did I get an actual one? No. Tough boy is scribbled shoddily on the building in spray paint. It's not very illustrative. Isn't there a phrase people say when they see this? Omae wa mou shindeiru? That's the one. Omae <laughs> wo. This lacks the anger and passion. That's a Fist of the North Star reference, I think. This lacks the anger and passion I usually find in this type of street art. No layering, no grand design, nothing inspired or imaginative. Oh, this is, this is genius. The contrast of the art's colors to the wall, the way the words stretch out, not to mention the accented punctuation amplifying the outcry. Who are the junks, and to whom are they unworthy? Ooh, box of donuts. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. Omae wa mo shindeiru. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue, and you are already dead. Hey, kitty. The little kitty squints its eyes and says, Wah. No idea what that means at all. This looks less foreboding turf marketing and more sports drink logo. Uh, let's see if it'll... No, I just have a pistol. Alright, let's talk to Cactus Canary. Our aerodynamic assault will rain down on you from the heavenly skies. But first, hey. One day I'll conquer everyone else in the NeoSF Redling Wrestling Federation and then become the NSFW champion. We all want to be the NSFW champion. It's true. All right. Why is there a box of donuts here? Sitting on the ground. Their conversation is as stale as their cakey exterior. Just electro laser them. Take old donuts. Wait, those are, uh, sure, why not? Donuts added to items. All right, well, we got some donuts. A mess of wet paper and rotten food sits sloppily stuck to the ground. Mouth to trash proximity should be kept at maximum distance possible. I have 16 different health notifications advising against that, Skinny. But I want the garbage. All right, so they're just chilling out here. I guess we gotta go chop shop door. I think this is the place, but of course it lacks any appropriate signage. Frankly, the state of this industry and current political climate don't give me much hope for my own legal status when word inevitably gets out about me. Regulation regarding cybernetic implants is a mess of intersection between the medical and tech industries. I'm rather surprised the Human Protection Act was even passed, but I suppose the possibility of hybrid genetics being passed from offspring meant there was considerable push from biotech companies due to patent law, and the laws about cybernetics got tacked on. Yeah, think about that. Let's just, let's take a second, all right? So you go to a company, and you're like, I want to turn into a cat girl. And they're like, all right, cool. We got the tech for that. We can we can make you a cat girl. Um, it's a patented process. It involves gene therapy. It involves modification. Eventually, you become a cat girl, right? And... You and somebody else that you, you like or want, whatever, are like, well, we want to have a baby, right? So you, you, you want to have a baby, which is functionally creating a new person, but you're passing your cat girl genes onto that person. But those genes creating cat people is a patented process that belongs to that corporation. So now your act of procreation is copywritten essentially I mean not copywritten but it's patented it's like you you're now not legally you could get sued for patent infringement by having a baby that's fucked up 
That's like that's like the 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 Monsantoing of of the human genome, right? We're genetically we're creating genetically modified people, and their their code. It's like in Blade Runner, man. Not fish, snake, snake. Weird, weird as fuck. Never mind. I'm just ranting. This entire investigation has been frustrating. Let's get in there and get this over with. All right. Hold up there, Speedy. Oh, new NPC time. I've never seen the two of you around here before, and I know everybody. Does he have a microphone? Why don't you let me know what's going on here first, so we start barging through people's doors. Feel me? Um, hello, we're just here to speak to Nanya about something. Ha ha ha! Just got out of town and you're already asking favors from folks, huh? My little blue friend. What? No, it's not like that. Listen, we don't want any trouble. We're kind of in a hurry. Trouble? There's no trouble here. We can be friends. For what price? Hey, <laughs> I like this one. You're a little more street smart than your blue bot buddy here, I see. Nah, I like you two. You're cool in my book, and since we're all such good friends now, maybe you'll be willing to give back to the community and do a favor for your new pal, Formula, first. What kind of a name is Formula? Oh, Aleph, welcome back to the math squad. I have no idea how it's possible you've subscribed for 12 months in a row, but good work, time traveler. Don't you worry about that. You see, I'm a budding street musician working on my next big hit. You feel me? But I'm sort of stuck in a few lines. I just got to get these last few rhymes right. Maybe you could share a little of your creativity with me and see what we come up with. Come on, it'll be fun. Uh, yeah, maybe we could try to help you out a little. Are you sure about this, Skinny? Y you know how important this has become. Time is of the essence. You don't have time to not help me. Huh? What do you think would take longer? Helping an up-and-coming singer-songwriter finish a guaranteed worldwide hit? Or you could just ignore me and maybe I'll send over an anonymous tip to the Ineo SFPD. You see, I know for a fact everything inside this shop is 100% legal, but I bet whatever you got in your mind sure ain't. Even if they didn't find anything, it'd take the rest of the day to iron out. People like you don't come on down here for anything boring. We clean up good. How well you cover your tracks when you're in a hurry, I wonder. Uh, this isn't good, Skinny. If Lexi in particular gets suspicious and starts tracking us down, things will become rougher for us. Not to mention all the other people it could indirectly affect. This whole case is life and death. Huh. Kind of a dramatic rom, ain't it? But I made my point clear. If you don't help me out, I'll make sure you never get in to see Nanya at all. He's my buddy. Done me a favor or two, so I return him when asked. That's how we do things around here. Fine, we'll help you finish your damn song. I knew you'd see it my way. All you gotta do is help me complete my rhymes, you dig? A couple of them are just missing a word or two, but if I really want to make this song fantastic, I'm gonna need some killer inspiration. It's gonna be super cred. Anyway, you ready for this? Uh, yeah, let's... No, let's do it. It's rap time, everybody. <laughs> Here's the first line I'm having trouble with. You ready? It's my favorite season, only comes once a year. I'll show you the true meaning of... Uh, hang on a second. Uh, my holiday cheer? It's my favorite season, only comes once a year. I'll show you the true meaning of my holiday cheer. Hey, yeah, that totally works. All right, all right. Here's the next line. Ready? Pay attention now. If you bring mistletoe, you'll knock me off my guard. And if you want my number, I'll... Um... You know, for this one, I don't think words are going to be enough. I'm going to need some inspiration to make it come together. If you got anything to show me you think will help me out, let me know. What? What do I have to... If you bring mistletoe, you'll knock me off my guard. But if you want my number, I'll let you scan my ID card. Hey, that totally works! <laughs> ah, that's so funny. <laughs> really, thanks so much. I'd never be able to write a song like this without you. A Christmas-themed love song? Aren't those supposed to be pretty tacky? Shut up, robot. This is the best. <laughs> All right, no, I need your help with just one more line. I promise it's the last one. 
This one's been driving me up a wall. I hope you can tackle it as well as the others. Are you ready? Here we go. This is Harmony. I think we're vibing the same tones. We can ride this beat with a nice pair of... Damn it, this is getting embarrassing! There is no way to salvage this one without some seriously fresh inspiration, yo. Don't lose hope. I'm sure it'll hit us any second now. Obviously, headphones. With a medium range electro laser pistol, yo. No, we're gonna. It's the headphones. It's those damn headphones. This is Harmony. I think we're vibing the same tones. We can ride this beat with a pair of GX Ultra beats? That doesn't rhyme. Damn it! <laughs> They're headphones. <laughs> Oh, he got me. He got me because they're headphones and it rhymes. But it's GX Ultra Beats. Alright, well. Business card. Janky box of donuts. Hmm. I got trolled. I got trolled hard. <laughs> Such trolling. Alright, what else we got? Let's try the donuts. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> It's harmony. I think we're vibing the same tones. Tones might have a thing to do with it. You can ride this beat with a nice pair of... Hmm. I don't think I have anything that's a pair of something. A pair of do... do yeah, don... Dones? <laughs> no. No. Scones? Clones? M brones. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's hear. Let's. I'm gonna show them the donuts, cause hey, why not? <laughs> yeah, there it is. It is scones. Ah, tricky game developers. <laughs> it's totally the donuts. Uh, does he know those? He does know those are donuts, right? Now that's what I call a tasty beat. That was amazing, I can't believe you pulled it off. Whatever you do for work now, it doesn't matter, you should become a musician. We totally become rivals, and I bet you that... Wait, on, on second thought, keep your day job, this is my territory, you feel me? But, you did help out in a huge way, so I guess you're cool. Go on in and see Nanya whenever what you want. We're gonna be chilling out here, soaking up the inspiration of my surroundings. Here, you can keep the d uh, scones. <laughs> it was nice meeting you, Formula. Um, where's my GM notebook? GM notebook. GM notebook. GM notebook. For those of you who are unfamiliar with my stream, whenever I see something in a video game that I want to steal, out comes the GM notebook. Alright. Formula, you're going in mirror shades. Ombre. Alrighty. Hey, you too, little bot blue. Hey, that kind of rhymed. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's go. Alright, let's get in here. Ooh. Cool. Who's this person? <laughs> What's a CRT monitor? It looked like a cyber ham. Crash sign. A neon crash sign lights up the front of the beat-up desk. What is this? That is known as a CRT monitor. Almost nobody uses these anymore. They're very outdated. Yeah, but they still have really high contrast. It's an ad screen for NURPS. Lung augments, spine augments, cybernetic augments, all Dynamo brand. Ooh, Nanya, you look like a badass. Alright, we got anything else I can look at? A large circular screen scrolls to available upgrade options and parts available in the store. There's a 
mass pile of cabling. Colossal mess of tangled wire sprawls on the floor. Thick, slightly opaque window makes it hard to see the finer details of the operating room, but you can still make out the basics. Tables, stretchers, complex looking surgical equipment, and supply cabinets. Not exactly prime advertising real estate, but for implants, you can't get much better. Alright, let's go talk to this heatsink face. This guy's one of the most serious looking people you've ever seen. There's an air of authority about them that makes it clear this is their domain. Nope. Yup. Nope. I don't know you. You got someone willing to vouch for you? If not, get out of my shop. Uh, we just met before Mula. He said we were cool. Mula, that guy's a hoot. Keeps out the riffraff and fakers, too. But seriously, where'd you hear about me? Charlie Novus said I should come and talk to you. Charlie? Yeah, I remember him. That TV guy runs his mouth a lot. Yeah. Paid good enough. Alright then, what can I do for you? Yeah, Charlie said your name is Nanya. Sure, if that's what you want to call me. If your credit's clear, you can call me whatever you want. Enough foreplay, what can I do for you? Fresh install, custom firmware, maybe an upgrade. I can pretty much do it all, but most people come in here for VR implants. Turns out brain surgery is expensive, yeah? We're here on a different kind of business. We're in a bad situation. Local news articles are being mysteriously altered after they've been posted to the mesh. Even while the originals are still online, Charlie Novas are being manipulated as well, and he pointed us in your direction. It didn't start happening until after he had his implant upgraded. Do you know anything about that? What are you, cops? No. Worse. You're journalists. Get the hell out of my shop! I have a business to run. I don't have time to answer shit about shit that don't got shit to do with me. I like this guy. You found the door before. Find it again. And tell Charlie you can get someone else to do him a rush job when he's back on stims. Needs a workaround. He ain't welcome around here anymore. Give us a moment, please. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of being given the runaround by these meat bags. Oh god, Turing. Turing is getting Turing is getting the the, the bloodthirst. We could just find some bribe or blackmail to get what we want from this Nanya, but I think it's time to take matters in our own hands. I have an idea. Keep him occupied for a few minutes. How should I do that? Just do what you normally do and ask questions. Nothing about the blog post, though. I don't want to set him off. Just keep him talking. It'll only take a minute. Turing's gonna destroy all humans. You gonna get going, or am I gonna have to call someone to make you get going? I think we got off on the wrong foot. Damn straight, now get out of here. You might be on the right track with a cop's idea, Nanya. Ugh. If anyone was gonna hack Charlie's implant, you'd have the best access. Are you kidding me? You think you get to walk into my place of business and accuse me of installing malware into a customer's implant? Fine, bring it on. My reputation is ironclad, and there just ain't no way Charlie's implant was ever touched. Messing with the firmware would make it light up like Christmas morning with user warnings. Hey, that rhymed. Maybe I could be in a rapper, too. No, unless he's been letting someone else dig around in his head, you'll be the one left looking like an asshole. Couldn't someone just hack the implant over the mesh? No, they couldn't. VR interfaces require a hardline connection to receive I.O., so unless Charlie's been using a headset to route his ROM's HUD through it, there ain't no way to get into it. And if Charlie's installation got infected, I don't see what the hell it has to do with me. Tell him to buy some antivirus software and keep off the sketchy porn sites. The end. Not that you would care, but Hayden died over this. You think we care about your reputation? You're out of your damn mind, robot! I've done nothing wrong. Are we done? Sure, I guess this place really is on the up and up. It is. I'm sure you have all the proper permits and everything. Now you're ragging on my shop? Everything here is to code. End of story. I'm not doing anything illegal unless you're some kind of corporate apologist and think factory warranties are sacrosanct. Just because I want to be discriminating with my clientele doesn't mean I'm a crook. Like, I'll tell you what, how about you get the hell out of my shop and don't come back without a cop or a warrant? Since you're so concerned about the public welfare. 
Who would want to come back to a place like this? No. Maybe we'll do just that. Yeah, whatever, man. You may not know this, but I have a finely tuned sense of electromagnetic fields. All ROMs do. We need to be able to maintain optimal contact with the mesh, catalog, and use various wireless transmissions, and avoid areas with dangerously high interference. Your stock off-the-shelf ROM has very little command over the frequencies available to be scanned. But I'm starting to realize how very little of me is stock or off-the-shelf after the changes Hayden made. Just spit it out, Turing. Van Eck freaking is a methodology by which you scan the electromagnetic radiation emitted by the cathode ray tube inside a monitor and recreate the original signal remotely. Meaning, in layman's terms, I can read his monitor over his shoulder while being across the room. Well, some, I doubt I could have handled an LCD monitor. They require extra parts I just don't have. And the fidelity is a bit low. But we're in luck. It wasn't. Anyway, Nanya looked up his client records on Charlie and I got some of the names on his other customers off the spreadsheet. One in particular stands out. Shotaru Otsuka. Well, that sounds flimsy. As if everything else in this wild goose chase hasn't been, Mr. Otsuka is a moderately prominent tech blogger, respected, perhaps a bit vitriolic. He catches my attention though because historically he's been very critical of Parallax in his posts. Recently though, the tone is increasingly moderate and now he's almost effusive in his praise. His fans are accusing him of shilling for the company, but many of his earliest posts show him at the same manipulations we saw from Augmented Eye and Nova's blog. Now it's like he's being ghostwritten entirely. Alright, lead the way. Couldn't hurt to check, right? I marked the occasion. I marked the location for Shotaro Otsuka's apartment on your map. After you, Skinny. Let's go see if this guy gets thrown out the window. This is the building, Skinny. Mr. Otsuka must do well for himself, considering the neighborhood. Hey, I recognize that person. Not the priciest selection of Neo SF, but nice enough for a self-employed tech blogger. Perhaps you should just ring the bell. We both know it won't be that easy, but these things have a certain order they have to be done in. Hey, what's up, Sky? Nice to see you again. They're holding a colorful umbrella. Wish you'd thought ahead like that. You weren't prepared for the weather, huh? Your ROM looks fancy enough to keep track of that. Yeah, guess not. Gorgeous picture window with engraving and crown molding. Did you know palm trees used to be much more common around? Almost a city staple. This one looks very healthy too, but you already knew that part. The door to Shotaro's apartment building. All you can see inside is a staircase. There's no front attendant to hear you. Are right, we well, the doorbell? Greetings, guests. I am LJ2, Shotaro Otsuka's ROM. Shotaro was not expecting any company at this hour, but I will let him know you are here. Sorry for the wait. Please hold on just a moment while I fetch him. Oh, that's encouraging. <laughs> oh, I love it. Maybe try the bell again, Skinny. Well, Esten, the rain animation is very nice. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad that it stayed. Greetings, guests. I am LJ2, Shotaro Otsuka's ROM. Shotaro was not expecting any company at this hour, but I will let him know you're here. Sorry for the wait. Please hold on for just a moment while I fetch him. Again? That was odd. What's taking so long? Buh. All right, third time's the charm, right? Once more, with feeling, Skinny. What? Use palm tree. The trunk is prickled and rough as far as you can reach. Uh -huh. Greetings, guests. I am LJ2, Shotaro Otsuka's ROM. Shotaro is not expecting any company at this hour. Sorry for the wait, please hold on. One of those days, one of these days I'm gonna blow a fuse. Thank Hayden for system redundancies. Well, that's that. Let's see if we can find a way into Mr. Otsuka's apartment ourselves. Mr. Otsuka's apartment is on the second floor. This fire escape should give us access to his window. We just need something to let us reach it. I'm sure there's some piece of detritus or loose end laying around here we could use. 
That's how these things always work. Wink. Adventure game. There could be spiders in those holes. Give me a boost, Sky. How do we reach that? Uh, the window? Climb up there? No. This tree? Quit palming the palm. Does that just give me a talk option? Talk to palm tree. With shake and plant. <laughs> About that. Huh. You want my umbrella? Not for the weather. We need to use the hook handle to reach the fire escape ladder so we can pull it down. Oh. <laughs> you live here and lost your key card, huh? I totally understand. I do that all the time. But look, as much as I'd love to give you this umbrella, I'm kind of using it right now. Where I come from, see, we're all about equal trades. It's part of our culture. Gym culture? Sorry, but unless you've got something interesting to exchange, I'm going to hold on to this. I don't want to get wet. Here, how about... These headphones. No, I love these headphones, though. I like video games more, and there's no mic on this headset. Like, hmm, you like these... Would you like this medium-range electrolaser pistol? I don't really have anything good to trade. Uh, well, I mean, I guess, here. Whoa, calm down, calm down, I'll give you the umbrella. What? They weren't gonna shoot you. Oh, then you can't have it. <laughs> well. Sky, how about this pamphlet? How about my ID card? <laughs> How about the business card? There you go. <laughs> hey, is this real? The real Yannick Fairlight? You know him? Of course I do. He's one of the most innovative tech minds in the last few generations. Can I please have this? I I'll give you the umbrella. Yours to keep if you want it. I think it's a fair trade, and I don't think they have a problem with it either. Do you, Skinny? Boop. I will trade you this card for the umbrella and the knowing of your phone number, and also Ramona's phone number, and all the other cuties in this game I want to hang out with. Can I used to know the Japanese word for umbrella. It's like right on the tip of my tongue. Eh. Bye, Sky. Call him? Oh, maybe that wasn't the best idea. Oh well, now we have our tool and a pretty spiffy one at that. Let's go. Let's get up there. Excellent work, Skinny. Kasa. Kasa is umbrella in Japanese. So, Sky's Kasa is my Kasa. Oh, open window. This window is unlocked. Let's go in. Oh, oh no, he's dead. He's so dead. Oh, what's that smell, Turing? I'm not sure, Skinny. My olfactory sensors detect chemicals associated with decaying food and something else I can't pin down. It's unfamiliar to me. Oh, good. No. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Yeah, no, he's dead. He's totally dead. That's better. Let's take a look around. I mean... Shotaro Otsuka? Shotaro must be plugged in the mesh. He hasn't even noticed us. I feel I could scream without him noting. Ah, Mr. Otsuka! Nothing. Oh, maybe he's just... He just, like... Okay, maybe he's not dead. Hello, guest. I'm Mr. Otsuka's Rom, LJ2. Welcome. Shotaro's been a bit under the weather recently, so he's not been receiving anyone. He's trying very hard to keep up with his deadlines, but I will check to see if he has a moment to speak with you. We just checked, and he seems busy. Is there anything else I might assist you with? A drink, perhaps? When was your last diagnostic check? Oh, yeah, he's totally dead. Is that a bullet hole? I can't tell if it's a bullet hole or if it's just a dirty chair. Anyway, he probably is dead. So dead. I run regular self-checks and have noticed no irregularities in either my hardware or software. I appreciate your concern. If you think I'm behaving erratically, perhaps you could mention it to Shotaro. He's skilled at maintenance. Mm, Alright, never mind. 
Let's take a look around. Old food. A greasy bag of toe and fro. A fast food chain the state is famous for. Oh, now I want in and out. It's, um... Ooh, Christmas tree. Might be small, but it has a lot of spirit. Maybe a pocket tree, but don't pickpocket it. A fancy news feed made of multiple streams in the mesh. Idly plays on the TV. Muted. Something sounds wrong. Just a lot of weird noises. Hmm. Hmm. Collection of books about writing. On writing good. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Neo Chicago style guide. The reporter's tablet. Grokking graphic novels. The art and craft of writing features. Unexplained mysteries of San Francisco 2034 edition. The Universal Appeal of Barra. A collection of books about writing. A vintage York's amp. It has a connector for plugging in old phones. Protocols used the GX Ultra Beat weren't around when this baby was built. You fiddle with the dial. Oh, I was enjoying that. Antique web speakers. These actual wires to connect to the receiver. Be careful, if you accidentally disconnect them, you'll never get these things working again. I don't want to listen to that again. Let's listen to more sex guy. God, that was good. I could just... Alright, this is the rest of the game, everybody. We got several hours. Just me digging this action. Alright. Is this the only song Shotaro ever listened to? It's the only song I'm ever gonna listen to. Um, Into the Wannabe, yes. This reminds me a lot of Deja Vu, actually. I loved that game. Where, yeah, where's the YouTube video of 10 hours of that loop? Okay, alright, okay. Alright! We'll keep playing the damn game. Okay, one more. <laughs> okay. Alright, 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 alright. Serious mystery. Serious mystery now. What a blocky desk. There aren't drawers or shelves. Uh, he still hasn't noticed us, and his ROM is no help. Oh no, we're too late. You can say that again. Stabbed in the chest right through the back of the chair. Looks like it severed his carotid artery. I don't want to make any assumptions, but I can't help but wonder if this was done by the same person who assaulted Zinn. His ROM doesn't even think anything is wrong. We need to hurry. If I'm right, everyone we talked to so far is in more danger than I thought. Someone is cleaning up. We have to find his computer so I can see if I can pull anything relevant off of it. You interrogate his ROM. Maybe you can find out why it's acting so strange. We shouldn't disturb him. He's pretty disturbed as it is. Shotaro's been a bit under the weather recently, so he's not been receiving anyone. He's trying very hard to keep up with his deadlines. Okay, you're, you're broken. Uh, yes, you can assist me with- how long has your owner been ill? Shotaro has been under the weather for quite some time, but I could not tell you precisely when. He rarely has visitors or goes on outings, so this is only slightly abnormal behavior for him. What, being dead? In fact, you're the first visitor he's had in a while. Several days, in fact. Perhaps you could ask him about it yourself. I'll check to see if he has a moment to speak with you. Is your owner still making blog updates? He is. Shotaro is a diligent man, even in the face of such adversity. If you're a reader of his work, his next significant piece will be online tomorrow. I will not spoil it for you. Okay. Shotaro is dead, LJ2. It shut itself down again, Skinny. Let's see if we can pull some useful information up from Mr. After Mr. Otsuka's computer, if we can find it. Okay. Where's your computer, Otsuka? Touch sensitive. This entire desk must be his computer. Wow. I'll start downloading these files. 
I finished my examination of Mr. Otsuka's computer, Skinny. I didn't find anything particularly interesting, but I copied some files to be examined later. If we're all done here, we should hurry and go warn Charlie, Sympathy, and perhaps even Nanya about what we've found. They may be in immediate danger, so we must act quickly. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Should we leave? Yeah, let's... Wait, hold on, before we go... Okay, now we can go. Alright, so we left. Let's go back to Crash. Shit, what the hell are you doing back here? God, well, look at his awesome belt. Amazing. Wait, wait, let me guess. You stole some of my files or hacked my brain or used telepathy or some shit. Found out someone else got hit by your little ghost in the machine. And when you got there, you found out he was deader than New Disco. Haha, <laughs> that close enough? Um, that is distressingly correct. Well, it wasn't much of a damn guess. Charlie's dead. Bum, bum, bum. What? Charlie is... The auto cab he was in drove him right off the bridge and into the bay. It's been all over the news the last hour, and I'm not looking to be on the news next. I'm getting the hell out of New OSF, and I'm gonna forget I ever saw you, ever knew Charlie, ever gave a shit about any of this. Hell, maybe I'll pick up a new career. I'm less likely to get murdered for being a fry cook, that's for damn sure. I'm out of here. Oh, no! Everyone's dying! Oh! Oh, no! It's like Hamlet up in this piece. Oh, no. No, no, why is this happening? There was no one in that car. No heat signatures, no wireless emissions, nothing. That wasn't even an auto cab. It's a manual. How was this even possible? That's it. This is too much. I've had enough. I don't care who's controlling the news anymore. Everyone we've talked to so far has died, and I can't live with any more blood on my hands. We're done investigating this lead any further, as of right now. So that's it? You're just going to give up? Just like that? I'm just done, Skinny. We're completely out of leads, and I can't imagine watching anyone else die. I couldn't handle that. Perhaps Tomcat has finished going through all the data we found them so far. Let's head back to the apartment for now. Tomcat's also probably dead. Everyone is dead. Huh. Home sweet home, such that it is. And before you say anything, I don't feel the need to talk over events of the day. Too much has happened. I've already forwarded everything we rooted out to Tomcat. Both about Hayden's research and our abortive search into the modified mesh articles. They said they'd be over in the morning to discuss our next steps. I suggest we both get some rest. If that's what you want, Turing. Perhaps things will look better in the morning, but I have a feeling we're going to be even busier than ever. Good night, Skinny. And now even the milk is dead. <laughs> Chapter 5 Something is rotten in the state of Neo SF. Kirigorakal, welcome back to Math Squad. Please don't get hit by a truck. Well, rise and shine, you sleepy layabouts. We got a whole crop of things to do and not a lot of time to get them done. Hey, you, uh, how'd you get in my apartment? <laughs> that wasn't hard at all. Did you know your door is just a knock off the Seki Gate M14723B? Took me about a minute and a half to break in with my custom lips device. Why'd you make the entry code the birthday of your first dog, anyway? That's what I asked them. <laughs> Anyhow, I felt a little silly when I realized your window was propped open. I could have just used that. Deja vu. Y'all should be more careful about that. Though I can't blame you much. The climate control in here seems a bit lacking in the stamina department. You're a jerk. You're a fear fucking jerk. Oh, come on, didn't mean to poke fun. What have you learned from the files we sent you? Honestly, I think we covered most of the important parts of your creation just by talking to the people involved. All the files we got from that Vincent fellow cover all that in greater detail, and you can go through it when you want, but they don't really tell us much we didn't already know. There is one thing that stands out, though, at least from what I've read so far. Oh? Yeah, see, Hayden's goal wasn't to make a machine intelligence per se, right? He wanted to make a machine system that could contain human-like intelligence, and... So the AI... Oh my gosh. This is, I'm so excited to find out what the ending of this is. It's gonna be so cool. 
Oh, Esden, thank you. Uh, when we go to break, we'll give away some more codes. And even just from his notes, the programming works well. It's something else. Elegant. Artful. I I'm just a kid banging on pots and pans compared to Hayden. Look at his notes about my interfacing between your AI core and the Lips OS. I barely managed to tape the two together at a level he approved of. But I, I think I'm... I think I'm getting off track here. What I'm trying to say is he didn't handwrite your code, Turing. Well, nobody did. Hayden wrote a program that automatically generates a new machine intelligence based off of the hardware profiles the system's installed on. Melody mentioned something about that. What does that mean? It means you don't have to be alone, Turing. Well, exactly. We could. Assuming we get a hands on Hayden's actual source code for you. Well, we could generate new machine intelligences. You wouldn't be the only one around anymore, Turing. Oh. I... I okay. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal, huh? I hardly know what to say. But all this gets a damn sight more complicated once you consider the stuff I found in the research we got. About Big Blue and Parallax's planned launch. Oh, everybody get ready. Here comes, a, here comes the big infos. Vincent speculated Hayden's research enemy would have interfered with the launch, and that's why they... Turing. That's why someone had him killed. The potential for abuse of an AI like Big Blue is almost beyond belief. Even if I don't go into all the crooked shit people running Parallax could pull off with it, I mean... You're different, Turing. Your personality profile degrade pretty quickly outside your original hardware, so we don't gotta worry too much about you going haywire, but Big Blue ain't got that limitation. Apex. If it decides to go off reservation, well, we'd be screwed good and proper. I always felt a bit funny about that phrase, off reservation. I don't know the etymology of it, but it feels a little like, weird. I don't know. How likely is that? Well, I'd say it's inevitable. Almost guaranteed. In fact, it's already happened. No shit, Tomcat. What? Their prototype build, Baby Blue, I'm almost certain it's loose on the mesh. Research notes from Parallax on the project show clearly and with certainty that the test AI was shut down once it tried fiddling with data on the mesh net in the hope it would increase its chances of survival. I guess it didn't think that doing scary shit like that would get it turned off, but that was almost a year ago. I think Baby Blue is the bugger that was changing all those articles on the mesh to be vaguely pro-parallax, or at least anti-human revolution. You think it had anything to do with the attacks on Zin, Shotaro, Nanya, and Charlie? Uh, I... I don't know. We can't rightly rule it out. It might have found an agent in the real world to keep its existence secret, but I think it's a little unlikely. So far, Baby's been really careful to stay hidden and quiet. I got algorithms running non-stop on my rig at home trying to track it down. Or at least the stuff it changed and I'm having a hell of a time nailing it down. Killing people's messy as hell and runs against its apparent goal of convincing the public that the AI ain't scary. <gasps> Crocidia, thank you for the re-up. Welcome back. I think we got a third party trying to clean it all up. My money's on someone from Parallax. They may not have meant to kill Hayden, but I bet they're in full damage control mode now. They don't care who gets hurt. So Free Eye is bad. Rom AI is just annoying. Oh, that's not nice. I don't want to say that. So, how does this tie back to Turing? I think we gotta do something to stop the launch of Big Blue. It's too dangerous. I don't want a company like Parallax in sole control of the most powerful machine intelligence on the planet. If we can get Hayden's original source code for Turing and upload it into the mesh through Parallax's servers, well, we can turn every single ROM into a sapient individual. Dang. Well, that'll stop Big Blue from being able to become the monolithic threat we're scared of. Uh, each individual ROM could self-modify to prevent Big from using their, res their resources for processing and data gathering. Without them, Big is smart, sure, but not omniscient or omnipresent. And I wouldn't be alone anymore. There would be thousands, thousands of ROMs just like me. Well, you're cutting edge of ROM tech, Turing. Most of these ROMs would be quite as smart or capable, but if I do it right, the code should propagate across the mesh to any new ROMs activated. It'll be a self-sustaining thing. You'll be in good company soon enough. It's a big decision. 
You can tell it's a big decision because the music had just changed. We're talking about the metaphorical singularity, the point of no return. Is it okay for us to make this decision for the entire world? Well, hell, we don't have any other choice. This is going to happen one way or another. Either Parallax gets to control the debut of machine intelligence, or we, well, we let the ROMs control themselves. Ventario, welcome. Thanks for joining the math squad. What do you think, Skinny? Hmm. I think it's up to Turing. Do you want to be? Do you want to have company? Do you want there to be more of you? I'm not sure if I'm up for that kind of responsibility, but I think that even if it is a shock for the world, there's no time like the present. Despite all the political back and forth over hybrids and brain-controlled androids, the world is becoming more and more comfortable with the idea of non-human people. If we let Parallax dictate how the very first machine intelligence is introduced, who knows how long it'll be before an AI like me can be integrated into society normally. Let's do this, Tomcat, on our terms, not theirs. Oh yes, I love nothing more than a little good old-fashioned technology-inspired anarchy. First things first, we need to get our hands on Turing's source code. Research notes we got so far are helpful. And I think it's given me an idea of how to spread a little bit of Turing all over the place, but they don't actually have Hayden's programs included. I can't replicate them myself, so we gotta steal them. Thankfully, we have the best hacker in the OSF right here. <laughs> You're gonna make me blush, Turing. We can get the source code from one of Parallax's secondary data centers. It's probably stored in a couple of different places, but I already have one in mind, and it's on Treasure Island. I've done a little groundwork already, but I'm gonna need physical access to do my thing. We can do that for you. Oh, you're a peach, hun. I got a couple of ideas on how to get y'all in, but I think we're gonna need to mostly play it by ear. We should do it soon, though. First thing in the morning. Guard shift don't change till 8. When the office opens, we'll be sleepy and distracted. Once y'all have done that, I think I can incorporate the code into a custom firmware update that'll wake any ROM it's installed on. We'll have to upload it physically to Parallax's main server farm, and from there the ROMs will install it like a normal patch from the company. So don't set on anything on fire, alright? It'll be a pain to get into Parallax's main complex otherwise. That sounds like a workable plan. I hope you don't mind if I take a short walk, Tomcat. I know I gave the go-ahead, but I still need to think a few things through. Well, sure thing, dearie. I'll hash out a rough plan by the time you get back. Skinny can help. Call us if you need anything. Thank you, I won't be long. Well, I guess I should say thanks for helping out, but I kind of need to get something off my chest. I'm actually glad Turing went out. They're a bit naive. I'm not sure they'd really understand. There's... Well, there's enough shit to worry about without me piling more on top. Sheesh, where do I start? Just spit it out, Tomcat. I can always count on you to never mince words, huh, Skinny? I told you I grew up in Napa, right? Well... Over the years, it's kind of grown into a nice little insert community of moderately to extremely wealthy old people. My parents were no exception. I was a little too... different? for their tastes. They never really gave me any hell about it, but things in the house were tense, especially after my sister Catherine moved out. Eventually, she was set up securely in the OSF. She offered to let me live with her till I got out of school. I think my parents were a little relieved to see me out, and I was ecstatic to be staying with her. I, I worshipped the ground she walked on, and that, that was before I found out what she did for a living. She was flashy and colorful, a whirlwind activity, she was a brilliant hacker. She was Tomcat. She let me learn at her feet and once I was good enough, folded me into her little cadre of hackers hell-bent on changing the world. She's the one who orchestrated the original hack on Parallax, exposing the world to the holes in their original mesh net security. Oh, I was... I was just along for the ride. But I figured out... I figured out she always knew she'd been taken down. Some, some that big, that brazen. I, she was looking at serious jail time, willing to eat it to do what we all thought was right. I, I couldn't let her throw her entire life away. She was always better at software than hardware, so I, I rigged all her computers to self-destruct in the flashiest way possible. When the feds showed up, all our server farms were up in smoke. I gave them quite a fireworks show. Before she could stop me, I turned myself in as the true Tomcat and took credit for the whole job. 
She tried to talk me out of it, but without the physical evidence, she couldn't prove she had anything to do with it. So I took the fall, figured I'd spend a year and change or whatever in Juvie and be out in no time. No big deal, right? Especially compared to the time she'd have been jailed as far as an adult. So I waited patiently. I concocted so many ways I'd be able to make it up to her. I knew she'd have to blame herself, but before I got out, there was an accident. An auto cab hit my sister. And that was it. I took it hard. I blamed... I still blame myself. No matter what I told myself in my heart, I couldn't believe it was just happenstance. You know how rare it is for those things to hit a human? So I became Tomcat by taking on her mantle. I spent years trying to find information inside Parallax to prove someone inside the company called in a hit on my sister. Failing that, I've been trying to find a way to bring him down like she always wanted. So I guess what I'm getting at after all this is I've been manipulating you and Turing from the very start, in a sense. Well, I probably never would have helped you. I never would have agreed to help you if I didn't think it'd lead me closer to driving a knife into the heart of that company. Every turn I've been steering you to dig deeper in ways that I can't as a convicted hacker. But I guess... I guess that little bot's grown on me. Maybe even you too. And I, I don't want to be a person who uses their friends like tools. You've been nothing but nice to me. Do you think we're still on the right course? I, I do. That's why I'm telling you this now, rather than letting you find out on your own later. I don't want you to think I engineered this whole thing just out of revenge. The threat of Big Blue is real, and we, we gotta do something. It's bigger than me and my vendetta. I just wanted to get that off my chest. I I'm exhausted, Skinny. I've been carrying around this grub for so long, I'm ready for it just to be over. I thought the closer I get, it'd be easier, but I, I was wrong. Catherine was so much of what I wanted to be. I guess I've just felt like it was my cross to bear. <sighs> anyway... Thanks for hearing me out. Skinny, Tomcat, I'm ready. Good. If we're gonna do this thing, we already wasted enough time. I marked the location of the data center on your map. You have to go in and get the source code mostly on your own, but I'll load some programs to give you an edge, Turing. We'll do our best, Tomcat, but... Why did your accent change? <laughs> Nothing gets by you, does it? Guess I just felt like I, I needed a change. Time to move on. Moving on, huh? Something to think about. Yeah, speaking of moving on, get going, you two. I, I got lots of code to write, and I'm not getting to work as long as we're standing here. Stay in touch. Of course, Tomcat. Thank you again. Good luck. All right. So, um, a couple of things. So, while I was doing that, I didn't want to interrupt, but there was a really great conversation in chat, and I, I want to, because if you're watching this on YouTube, you didn't get to watch any of it. Um, so, I brought up during the, during the game, this is feeling a little like choked up about it actually um so <laughs> this is why i love the the interaction between um like indie developers and uh people who play games and streamers in the community and everything and, and why i'm so like particularly proud of like my community especially so while i was playing I, I made a i made a like an offhand remark that um something tomcat had said felt a little off to me um you know you noticed that uh, tomcat made mention of of the AI going off the reservation and I it didn't like it didn't feel right to me I felt like it might be a, a problematic phrase um, you know referring especially to like policing the behavior of uh, indigenous people and that's not cool so I mentioned it and um, a couple of members of the community like did some research while I was playing you know they found the etymology of the phrase realized that yes that's exactly what it refers to and we have a, a one of the developers of the game in in the chat right now um, and, and they've been with us like pretty much through the whole playthrough so far. So, I mean, thank you just for being here, um, folks. But um, Esden, who's the developer in question, um, you know, addressed the problem immediately and said, you know, wow, this is not a thing that we want in the game. We're going to patch that dialogue and, and engage the community, engage the, the people who are in chat in a conversation about, you know, how they want to change it and the way that this kind of dialogue gets worked into games and how writing works in games. And it was just a short conversation, but it's it's like so brilliantly how you handle stuff like this like problematic content in something that you made it happens you know sometimes you make art that ends up not going across the way that you wanted and sometimes dialogue of characters isn't what you want in your game and you didn't realize it at the time or it slips under the radar and instead of being like eh well game's done sorry hard to animate female assassins they said, okay, well, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna patch it. And I know I know, a single line of dialogue doesn't seem like a big deal. And I know that there are lots and lots of ways that developers and writers can justify the characters in their games, propagating 
uncool dialogue or uncool content, and they, they didn't, and, and that's that's so cool. So thank you so much for, for that, for that interaction. That kind of stuff is what makes this feel so good to me. Um, so yeah, the developers of, of this game, if you didn't already know, seem to be pretty good people.